Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Cody, and I will be your host for the next hour and a half. Um, today, we are joined by the amazing lettering artist, Natalie Brown. How are you doing today, Natalie? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. We're so excited. I'm so excited to see what uh, projects we're work working on today because I just love your work. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, before I hand it over to Natalie, though, I just wanted to say, don't forget to subscribe to our Adobe Live YouTube channel. Um, we have all of our replays for our live streams that we do every weekday over there. If you want to rewatch anything that you missed uh, or just catch up on some of our uh, shows. And also... I wanted to say hey to everyone in chat. How are you doing, everyone? Good to see you all. Hey, Wade. Hey, Steve. Hey, Umicorn. Hello, hello. RB. Hello, Alana Flowers. Alana was just recently on Adobe Live as well. Uh, she had a great stream. Check her stream out on the Adobe <laughs> Live YouTube channel, of course. Um, thank you all so much for joining. Hey, Umicorn. Hello. All right, you guys, without further ado, I am going to hand it over to Natalie so she can show off her portfolio and show the kind of work that she does. Okay, thank you. Again, thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, this is my Behance profile. I This first one here, this card, I can't take credit for that. That's actually one of my students' work. <laughs> um, but she, I have a greeting cards course, and this is the the card she created. Um, I have some a mural here that I did, um, some work for Pilot, Pilot Pen, um, and more greeting cards because I love creating greeting cards. They're a great way to license your artwork. If you are looking to license your artwork, greeting cards are a great way to do that. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I have a bunch of just like lettering work here, greeting card work. Um, one of my favorite cards here, I miss your face during like the pandemic. <laughs> one of my licensees or licensors, I always forget which way it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they had me design a card like this. And this was one mm. of their biggest sellers. Surprise was the pandemic. Mm. Um but yeah, um, this is pretty much my work on Behance. I really need to add more. I'm really behind on adding, updating it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my portfolio on Behance. So if you guys are interested in following me, you guys can follow me at 3 LG. Yeah, absolutely. I actually first heard of your work um, back when you were on Adobe Live originally. Um, oh, I think okay. I modded. I think I modded your segment, um, and I <laughs> I just fell in love with your lettering work back oh, then. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's so beautiful. Um, well, so we can much. hop on over to uh, Fresco yeah. if you want to show us what you're going to be working on today. Yeah, so I'm going to open up Fresco. I already have it opened up. If you guys want to work on the same exact canvas as me, um, if you just click on settings, I just um, changed the dimensions here. So I'm doing a five by seven. So I'm thinking of it as like a five by seven digital card that I can potentially send clients. Um, or friends or printed on my own. So I'm doing a five by seven, uh, 300 PPI and doing clicking on OK and then just clicking on done. And if you notice that like your your artboard is vertically um, on the screen, we can go to settings again and then just rotate it to the right. Mm. Um, so I'm going to work on it landscape because I want to make like a thank you landscape card. Um, so, OK, so let's just jump right in because I want to make sure I go through the whole thing with you guys. <laughs> um, okay, so first off, I really like to work with just a pencil brush whenever I'm starting off any design. I I think it's because I've always worked with paper for so long, so pencil is just very natural for me. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create some guides, just some quick lines to just guide my my cursive writing. So I'm, I'm just going to draw one diagonal line, maybe about this angle here and then just transforming it clicking on the transform tool and just bringing it down a bit and then i'll click on the three dots here and click on duplicate layer and then again we'll move that drag it down hmm. just so we have that um those lines for our letters and you'll see what i'm doing as i slowly put it together because i like to create some guides for myself before i do anything um, and then when I add the middle portion, so this is going to be like my lowercase. So the the main portion that those two big lines, the top and the bottom, that's going to be for my uppercase. And then this midline is for our lowercase letter. So depending mm -hmm. on where you put it will change the way the letters look. Um, I can make them, you know, really long lowercase letters or really short. I like to make them a little bit long for like this style of 70s bubbly lettering. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll click on done. And then last but not least, I will just select multiple. So I'll click on the three dots, 
click on select multiple and select all of them. And then I'll merge the layers into one layer. Um, and so once that's done, this is going to be for the, or not the, thank you. So thank, and then you. So we have to duplicate this layer one more time. And then I'll drag it down here. So it looks something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, we can just drag this layer on top and then tap on the three dots and click on merge layer. So now we have some guides for ourselves for creating this cursive type of lettering. And then what I'll do next is I will reduce the layer opacity of those guides because I don't want it to get distracting with my actual sketch. And then I'll create a new layer on top of that. So now we could start sketching thank you onto our card. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I'm just going to be using the pencil brush. It's the normal pencil brush that comes with uh, Fresco. So then I will go in. And so whenever I'm doing any type, any type of cursive, I just will start off writing in cursive. So we mm -hmm. all know cursive like from elementary school. I mean, for my elementary school, maybe it's different <laughs> nowadays. Um, but I'll just write thank you in cursive. So again, following those guides. And I'll do something like this. And if you have trouble um, maybe sticking to certain lines, I would recommend turning on the grid and then turning on the just the regular graph grid. That mm -hmm. way, if you want to keep everything vertically aligned to that grid, you can do that as well. So what I'll do is I'll try to keep everything vertically aligned. That way we can kind of stick to a, st a certain style. So I'll do something like this. I might end up making the T bigger because then as you start working on it, you might see, oh, maybe I just need to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to extend it maybe up to here. Mm. And then I'll just continue just writing think. Just like this. You make it look so easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot of years practicing on paper, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the bottom portion, I'm going to do the the uppercase Y. So I like to kind of leave the tail just kind of sitting there for a second um, before I add anything. And then the O and then the U. So I'm just following these vertical lines here. And this will make, make your lettering look very consistent visually. And then I can take this Y's tail and kind of pull it over. Just to, once I've kind of had an idea of how my letters are forming, I can add that tail. Okay, so my goal for this design is to also make it like 3D lettering. So I want to make sure I have enough space between these two words. So I think that's good enough. We can always move them around a bit. Um, I might pull it over a little bit. So I'm just going to grab this the selection tool and just lasso over you and then we'll transform it and just maybe drag it a little bit this way and we'll click on done and deselect and so now i have my sketch ready to go so now whenever i want to make that bold kind of 70s retro type of lettering i will add to my add to my cursive writing. So I have my cursive here. And usually the goal whenever you want to create like 70s bold bubbly lettering is you want to give rules for your lettering. So mm -hmm. the way I see it is like, okay, I want every bottom portion of, le of the letters to be really thick and bold. So that's one rule I can give myself. And so what I mean by that is, oh, let me grab my pencil, is I will just say, okay, I want everything on the bottom to be really nice and thick. So maybe the the stem of our letters maybe are a little bit thicker like this and maybe we have the um ends looking like this so i'm giving myself these rules and i want to try to stick to them and then the same thing here we want to just make sure it's about the same thickness as this h's stem here and then we'll continue and then just kind of sketching it out same thing, we want to make sure it's nice and mm -hmm. bold on the bottom. So just giving myself rules, following those rules, it'll make it easier for, your, for you to like kind of stick to a style. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have the A. So I'm just kind of making this circle part towards the top because if you see my H, there really isn't any spacing at the top. I want to continue to keep that design across all of the letters. So I'll just 
connect it here. And then the same for the A, bring that down. And then as you're going, maybe this is, needs to be thicker. You might need to maybe space out your letters a little bit more. So you might see, okay, this N is really squished up against this A. So what I would normally do is I would just grab the lasso tool and then just select it and drag it on over just a little bit to the right. Because this is just our sketch. We'll go back over it with our with the brush that we actually want to use, and then we can kind of add color and so forth. But here's just, mm -hmm. we're just sketching it out. And then again, I want to make sure I'm giving the same amount of space. So this space should be equal to this space. And then bringing that down, that stem down. And the same thing for the N. The N is very similar to the H, so I kind of want to try to replicate that design here. just like this and then we just have the K. So again, we want to try to keep that same distance. Again, trying to stick to my guides here and then this portion of the K and then this portion. So we want it to be nice and bold here. And if you want to make it really bold, you can just go in and make it really, really bold, some of those portions. And then we just have to do this side of the T. And slowly it's coming together. So now we have thing we're pretty much done. Um, and if you want, you can always, you know, change it up a bit. If you maybe you want to make the letters a little bit thicker, you can do that as well. Maybe you want to make them wider. You can do that too. So it just depends on the look that you're trying to go for. I think for now, I'm just going to leave it and then I'll move on to the Y. So same thing. We want to make sure these are nice and round and bulging. And then bringing in this stem here. And we're kind of doing like this wide kind of round serif for any flat edges of our letters. Mm -hmm. So I will also bring this in. And then I like to skip this, like the tail of any letter because it might change the way it looks. It might be a little bit too squished to some, to, uh, in comparison to like these letters up here. So I'd like to do it last. Yeah, that's a good tip, kind of just like leaving some extra space so you can kind of just work it into how the other letters end up looking. Yeah, yeah. I try to like try to make it so that I don't have to like go back and like fix so many mistakes or make mm -hmm. a lot of changes because especially on paper, when you're working on paper, it's you only have one chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so then I'll go in here and then I will bring up this tail. So something like this. And we can add an exclamation point if you want. Maybe I'll just add one here just for that's fun. That's so fun. <laughs> yes. There we go. So now we have our thank you sketch ready to go. And I will just go in and kind of take a look at it, see if everything kind of matches up width-wise. So I can see that the Y-O-U seem a little bit more wide. Um, mm. So I wanted to make sure I do the same thing for these letters, just make sure they are wide as well. It doesn't have to be perfect because that's the kind of thing with lettering is um, some clients will be like, we don't want, want it to be super perfect. We like that kind of like hand lettered feel where it feels like mm -hmm. not super clean and perfect. Um, but again, it just depends on what you are trying to go for. Okay, so now that we have our thank you ready, I just realized this needs to be more bulging here. So I'm going to erase this. So now that looks like it fits better. So you see, like, mm. if I draw a line here, all of these seem to line up. So we want to try to keep to those, like, stylistic rules. Okay, so now that I have thank you done... What I'll do next is I'll create a new layer above that. And this is where I'll actually start just picking the brush that I want to use, the final brush that I want to use. 
Um, and before we actually make it 3D, I want to just really get down the final thank you with the exact brush that I want to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select a live brush. I really like the live brushes oh. in Procreate. Yeah, I think they're, they are they just look amazing. Um, so I like the oil, oil brushes. And the one that I'm going to use is the oil paint detail. So it's 32 pixels. And I'm just going to favorite it so it's in my favorites at all time. And then I also already have a color palette that I imported. So again, you guys feel free to use whatever color palettes that you want. Um, I'm not going to use all these colors, um, but for the most part, orange, pink, gray, light pink. These are the colors I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and let's start off with just a light pink here. So it looks something like this. And I'm just going to go in and just start tracing my sketch here and make sure you have this on a new layer because if I were to draw on the actual sketch you can see it's actually blending uh -huh. in with mm -hmm. that pencil so I'll click on undo and go back to this layer here and we'll start tracing our design here I personally use fresco a lot but I've actually never used uh, the light brushes before so it's really oh, cool really? to be able to yeah it's, it's it's cool to be able to see them uh, being used like this. Yeah, I I think the live brushes are like I don't I don't I feel like no other app has this, mm -hmm. and the textures just look really like super realistic. Yeah. So I really like I just really love the way they look. I also feel like the the sketching brushes in Fresco or the pencil brush feels more like a pencil to me mm -hmm. um, than other apps. Yeah, this is uh the the pen the default pencil brush in Fresco is one of my favorites. It's really yeah, good. Yeah, it's really good. So I'm I'm just filling it in, just kind of filling in those portions. And it's okay if you you feel like maybe you want to extend some portions. That's okay. And then I'll just continue following my sketch. When you're planning your card designs, do you typically come up with like a composition beforehand or you do you kind of like put down your words that you know you need and then kind of work the design around it? Um, so I actually start off with the words first um, just to see. What, well, in terms of like designing greeting cards, the one thing that um, well, some of my clients will tell me is like we want this certain word to be large we want it to be the most noticeable one mm -hmm. um and with that you kind of have to design like a layout that makes that word stand out mm -hmm. so normally i'll just like kind of sketch out the sketch really quickly and do these really really rough layout sketches with with making sure like certain words are like visually more important in the design um and then i'll kind of start making the layout and it's kind of like this it's it seems like a long process but it's really not mm -hmm. um it's just kind of prioritizing like the quote first and seeing like what letters need to be more significant in the layout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that made any sense. <laughs> no. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> so I also grab the eraser to like clean up any edges if I want to. Cause I know that the live brushes, sometimes they're a little bit like really bold. You can also mm. reduce the size if you want to. Um, but I like to make sure that like the stroke on all of the letters look, looks the same. It's really fun that you to... can see the, sorry, I was just going to say, it's really, ahead, fun that you... <laughs> it's really fun <laughs> that you can see the, uh, the paint strokes in the letters. Yeah. Like it really adds a lot of nice texture and depth to, um, to the leather letters rather than just having yeah. it as a flat color. Yes. And I feel like normally people, well, artists will want to add texture to their designs. Um, and this is just a really great way to already have texture just by using these types of brushes. Um, you can continue to add more texture to it, but um, this is just a really easy way to just immediately have that texture added onto your design. Mm -hmm. So we have think, and then I'm going to do you now. So again, just I'm just following my my sketch here. And once I like once I hide my original sketch, we can see how it turned out. What we need to fix, because mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's hard to see like maybe some changes we need to make. Okay. 
and I'm just filling it in here. Also, the live brushes make it really easy to fill in really quickly. Yeah, I noticed how fast you're going. It can really, like, it really fills in really quickly. Yeah, yeah. If I was using, a, like, another brush, I feel like it would take much longer. Mm -hmm. This pink color makes it look like frosting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. That's the other thing. Like, whenever I'm drawing, like, food, I like to use the live brushes. Uh-huh. Because it gives that more realistic, like, food texture. <laughs> um, so I like them for that too. Okay, almost done here. Okay, and then let me just do this exclamation point here. And then let's not forget the tail. Mm hmm Okay, so now we have thank you done. And then if I go to my layer where my sketches and I turn that off, you can kind of see like what we've created and we can also hide our guides here as well. And then I can see, okay, where do I need to clean it up a bit? Again, we can use our eraser for that. So I like to use the eraser. Um, and then I would just reduce the size maybe to about 10 pixels. And then I can go in and, oops, I got to go to that layer first <laughs> and clean up some of these edges. And we can also use our brush at the same time as well. Another thing you can do is you can actually grab your live brush again and grab the roller and then just turn it on that angle to just make sure all of those letters are lining up. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring it up a little bit closer here. I'm just making sure I might need to erase some of it. So again, the cool thing about the ruler is you can also erase maybe the edge here. I'm just gonna bring it a little bit more down. So now if I pull it out, you can see that it's much more straight. And then again, with my light brush, I'll just go in and fix some of these edges. And I can also see like portions that I didn't fill in all the way in case you want to fill those in. And then the yep. same thing for down here, I can measure just to make sure it all looks kind of aligns, everything lines up. It's kind of just a matter of like pushing and pulling and sculpting to mm -hmm. how you want it to look. Yeah. That's the great thing about these digital apps. Like you can easily go in and fix things. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think that looks good so far. Um, I might want to fix this little K here, but I think that looks good. I want it. I want it to have that like kind of hand lettered feel, not super super perfect. Um, and I'll go ahead and turn off my ruler. And now the next thing I want to do is I do want to make it 3D. So what I'll do next is I will click on my thank you layer, so the pink thank you layer, and let's go ahead and duplicate that layer. And then we'll drag the one on the bottom diagonally to the right. So maybe mm -hmm. something like this. And I like to make sure I try to give it some space in between. I don't want them to touch too much. So if I go down here, it starts overlapping. We could do that if, if you want, uh, but I feel like sometimes it's a little bit too much space. So I'll probably bring it up maybe up to here like this. And then I'm gonna change the color. So I'm probably gonna grab this orange and then we'll grab our paint bucket and we can fill in that layer with the orange. And then again, with our live brush, we can connect the layers like this. Oh, that's so and if easy. You, yeah, 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 it's really easy. Yeah. <laughs> and if you, if you have trouble like connecting them, you can also go to the pink layer and reduce the opacity just to see where you should be connecting it. I know that it's kind of hard at times to see like, oh, it connects up to here, or this mm -hmm. to this point. Um, so I'll go back to my orange and we can connect them like this. Mm. So whenever there's a corner, just make sure you are connecting those corners. 
So here to here, you can see that's why I reduce the opacity. I connect, connect. I can connect it to this point here. Um, and you see, I can just grab it and pull it. And then the same for the rest of the letters. And again, you can hold down to create a straight line if you want. Mm -hmm. And then again, here to here, even if it doesn't look like it connects, you still should create that diagonal line because you're gonna see like, once you start adding shading to this, um, you can catch those parts where it doesn't really look like it was correctly, where the shadow was correctly added. Okay, so we have the A and then the N. Okay. And again, just connecting these. This is such a cool trick. I probably wouldn't have thought of just copying and pasting the layer and it just saves so much time. Like you're not even yeah. thinking about perspective really or anything, like just keeping yeah. everything on <laughs> yeah. the same angle and just filling mm -hmm. in. Oh my gosh, that makes that so much easier. Yeah. It's, I feel like there might be like easier ways, um, but in terms of like, if I'm using the live brushes, I feel like this is the easiest way um, mm -hmm. just to create that 3D effect. And, just, and you still, I was just, sorry, I was just going to say, and you going. still, <laughs> and you still have <laughs> that hand-drawn <laughs> hand look to it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's what I like about it. It's just, I don't want it to be super perfect. The brushes give me that option of like, I can try to make it as perfect, perfect as possible, but still those, um, the brushes will nonetheless, like give you that texture and that roughness to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I really like. I am always like trying to tell people about these brushes. Like you guys don't know, these brushes are really cool. I really like them. And then just filling up this last portion. And then we just have the tail of the Y. And then here. So I think we're pretty much done here. So now what we could do next is we can go back to our pink layer and just increase the opacity. So now it looks something like this. Mm -hmm. And you can see slowly our cards coming together. And at this point, I'd probably I would probably select these two layers. So select multiple, and then let's just make sure that it's kind of centered here. We can also increase the size if you want to. Um, just make sure you grab a corner, and that will increase the size proportionally. So I'll just make sure it's centered here, and I will click done. Okay, I think that looks good. And then I'm thinking, okay, maybe I want to add some shadow to my letter. So what I could do next, there's various ways to um, add shadow to your lettering. What we could do is we can create a clipping mask. So I can go in here, create a new layer above my shadow layer, and click on this little icon here. So this will enable us to create a clipping mask. And then I want to select a darker color here. So maybe I'll grab this dark orange here. And then I will, again, with my um, live brushes, I can add some shadow like this. And maybe it's like that really um, straight shadow. Like it doesn't really blend. It's just a simple line. And maybe at some, at some portion, it kind of stops. Mm. And you can see here, once I zoom out, it kind of slowly, it starts to come together. And again, we mm -hmm. can always use the eraser to clean up some of those edges. But for now, I'm just going to leave it. You can also do the inner portion of these letters here. Um, clever in chat is saying it's neat that this came from a pencil sketch to this already fast, fun, and pretty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How yeah, long it's... does it typically take you to uh, create a, a card design from start to finish? Um, it depends on how many words. So the more words, the longer, and also the theme. So like depending mm -hmm. on the theme of the card, um, if they're like sentimental or like, um, 
I guess like sentimental cards or I guess cards that kind of you have to describe something visually, but it's kind of hard. Um, those are the ones that take longer. Um, whereas like happy birthday, that those are tend to be a little bit easier because you know what you know what signifies birthday balloons, um, mm -hmm. confetti, things like that, cake. Um, but some things like um, like sentimental cards or get well cards, you really have to think of you know new ways to like illustrate that in your designs. And I can see here I didn't connect this this U to this U, so I'll have to go back and fix or add it. And I think this looks good. Oh, then you need to add this Y here and maybe here. I'll just fill in that whole part. Okay, so I think that looks good. What I can do is, again, go back to my 3D layer here. So we'll select this layer. And let's make sure we get have that original orange selected. And I have to connect it here. I didn't connect it there. Okay, so I think that looks good. So far, so good. I can zoom out here, see how this is looking. I can turn off my grid and we can see, okay, this is looking really cool. What else can I do to it? Um, what I would like to do is maybe change the background color. So I'm gonna go to this layer here and we're gonna select a lighter color. So our colors are pretty, a little bit more dark on the screen. So we wanna make sure we have like a lighter color to make sure that those letters stand out. So I'm gonna select this light color here Oops, let me make sure I have this selected. And so I cannot fill this layer because it's an image layer. So I'm gonna create a new layer above that. Then we'll fill. And we wanna make sure that it's a pixel layer. So I'll click on the pixel. And so now I filled it in with that lighter type of pink here. And then I can go back to my thank you layer and I just wanna make sure everything looks good. I'm just kind of giving it a look over to see if I wanna fix anything. Um, at this point, I don't think I want to fix anything just yet. I think it looks good. I think what I want to do now is maybe start adding some more detail to my actual lettering. So what I'll do next is I will actually find, let me find this layer here. Oops. Let me delete some of these layers. So I think I want to add some texture or some fun lines to my 3D portion. So if I go to my favorite brushes, I actually am going to select maybe a, we could do a dusty. So if you go through your brushes, we can you know select any of these types of brushes depending on the texture that you wanna to add to it. Um, a rake, we can do like a rake, maybe like a raked texture. We can see how that looks. So if I draw in here, you can kind of see oh. how that texture would look. Um, so what I'll do next is I will just, let's actually select this layer and then let's lock the transparency. So when I lock the transparency, I'm essentially saying whatever I draw, only put it on this layer or this selection here. So if I draw on this, it's only gonna put it on that area. So I can see how that looks. Just gonna add a little bit of texture. Just I'm just curious how this would look. And again, the, the whole process is just kind of playing around with how certain things look. Um, you might wanna change some things if you want. So I'm actually gonna go unlock this transparency and let's actually go up one more and create another clipping mask because I want it to actually go on top of both of these layers. So the shadow layer and that 3D layer. So then I can add some texture like this, a little bit more texture. And I'm just lightly kind of adding it here. Just like that. And we can continue to add more if we want to. So maybe, I also have maybe like a half tone line here. If I create a new layer and create another clipping mask, I can create this like line here. That looks really cool. And with this, yeah. And then with this line, I would change the opacity or the blend mode. So what I would go and kind of play with the blend mode here. Cause I don't want it to be super, super light on that background. I could do like a soft light. So it's very gentle on there. So it's not super, super apparent. Um, and then what we could do next is I can actually add some more detail to the actual thank you portion. And if you don't like something, you can always go in and maybe hide a layer. Maybe you feel like that's a little bit too much, maybe too much texture. Um, feel free to play around with what you like and what you don't like in your design. 
Okay, so now that I have that texture added, what I'll do next is let's actually try create using like masks for thank you. So let's duplicate thank you here and you'll see why in a second. And let's hide this top layer here and let's select that bottom layer and let's fill it in with the color white. So I'm just gonna grab white here and I'm just gonna fill it in. Thank you, like that. And then let's go back to our top layer and turn it on. So now if I wanna create a mask, let's click on mask contents, oops. Not mask contents, create an empty mask. So now if I go swipe to the right on my layer, I can, add, I can hide or reveal that layer. So let's mm -hmm. actually hide that layer. So make sure you have hide layer selected. And with the, any type of brush, depending on which one you wanna use, I'm probably gonna just use a regular brush. I can like add some detail like this, make it look a little bit shiny. Mm. So essentially what it's doing is it's hiding this portion of the layer. So it's kind of like I'm erasing some of it, but not necessarily. So just adding some detail. And then again, depending on the brush that you select can change the way that looks. Um, Wade in chat is asking, uh, Natalie, where do you get your brushes? Um, so most of these, uh, most of these brushes are from Procreate, but I believe that the halftone brushes, I got them from Creative Market. Um, those brushes, I believe they're from Creative Market. I'll have to double check, but yes, I'm pretty sure they're from the Creative Market. Creative Market has so many good things. Yeah, so, they have a, a lot, a lot of brushes. That's why I'm like, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's from there. Um, and I don't normally buy brushes, but I was very curious about like brushes for fresco. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I don't ever buy brushes and I feel like fresco already comes with a lot of really good brushes, but I was very curious, like, oh, is there anything other types of brushes out there? Um, and I really liked, um, the half tone brushes. Okay. So I think that looks good. And again, we can continue to add to it. We know we, maybe we can add an outline to it just depending on how you guys want it to look. Um, what I'm thinking next is again, so we have our mask here. So again, if you want to edit your mask, just make sure you swipe to the right and then you can go into that mask. Um, but I'm going to go back and swipe it to the left so it, I can see what layer I'm actually working on. Um, and then the next thing I want to do is I actually want to add some, some like starry, like stars. And I believe, let me see if I can find it. I know it's included in Fresco. I have it saved, but I want to show you guys where you can find it. Oh yeah, so under F FX, um, if you go to the bottom, there is a starscape at the very bottom. Mm. And this adds like pretty stars onto your design. So I like to put it at the very top. And if you see here, oh. I'm adding like some sparkles. So again, we mm -hmm. can make them really small or really, really big. Um, if I click on undo, I can just kind of add them a little bit here and there. Cute. So just a little stars. I like to make add stars to my designs. <laughs> um, and if you want, you could duplicate that layer to just make sure that it's a little bit more bold onto the page. Um, and then you can also erase some. I feel like maybe this is a little bit too much over here. I just have to make sure I'm erasing both of those layers. Let me make a big eraser here. Okay, I think that looks good. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I like to add like a personal touch to like my thank you cards. So if you guys want, again, this is optional if you want to or you don't want to, um, but I'm actually gonna go back to my layer with my guides. If you guys recall, we had these guides. Let's pull it up to the top here. And we'll click on done. And at the very top, we'll create a new layer here. And then with my pencil brush, so again, going back to my pencil brush, and I'm gonna select maybe a light gray color like this. And I'm just gonna write to And just a little line so you guys can personalize mm -hmm. your thank you card if you want. You can always remove it, remove that layer if you want to, and I'll hide those guides here. 
So it looks something like this. So we've added a little personal touch here. You can add someone's name here. Um, we can adjust the size. Let me just go back up to the top. And the cool thing about working with the light brushes, when you scale the brush or when you scale your design, it won't get pixelated. So mm -hmm. that's another cool thing about the light brushes. Whereas if you're working with the pixel brush, um, it will get pixelated once you start making it really big or really small. Okay, so I think that looks good. I think the next thing I wanna do is kind of add to the area around it. I feel like it feels a little empty. So what I will do is I'll actually go to my, we're gonna go to our grids and we're gonna click on turn on grids. And then I want you guys to select perspective grid and just make sure one point, the vanishing point only has one point. Um, and you can go ahead and click on edit vanishing point. Just make sure it's in the center. It'll snap to the center. If you kind of drag it around, it should snap to that center. And then we can click on done. And then we'll create a new layer above that. And so let's kind of create some like light rays going off around our main word. So I'm going to go back to my, I want to go back to my live brushes. I want to kind of stick to that same brush and let's select a color. And we can always change these colors if you want. We can maybe do like a more bold orange here. And I will go around and just add some lines here. And it's just snapping to that grid. Oh, cool. And if it's not snapping, just make sure you go onto your... Um, grid and it should snap to your axis. So if you click on snap to axis for a drawing, it should snap to the axis. Mm. Okay, so if I turn off my grid really quickly, we can kind of see how that looks. Um, and then I can go in and kind of refine those lines. So just make sure I turn my grid back on. And then this is where I will Kind of fix them a little bit maybe make them a little bit bolder we can also turn off the snap to drawing because i want to just make sure that i can you know maybe make the angle a little bit different mm. i'm just going to rotate my canvas to make it easier i'll hide this panel Uh oh, I think we might have lost Natalie, you guys. <laughs> oh no. One second, everyone. We will be right back. We are having a little bit of technical connection issues. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, we will be back in like just one minute. Stick around. Okay, we are back. We just had a little bit of a connection issue, but Natalie, go on ahead. Okay, let me continue. Let me rotate my canvas here. Okay, so I just need to do a couple of more um, lines adding to the page. So I just have to add it here. Okay. 
Okay. So I think for the most part, my card looks almost done. I would say like for the most part, everything looks great. I'm just going to rotate it, make sure it's nice and center. And again, at this point, we can turn off our grid and we can turn off all, any grids just to make sure we kind of have, have a better look for how it looks. Um, I might add some little dots here and there and actually with maybe a pink. Mm. Just adding a little bit more detail. So something like this. And I think that looks good so far. Um, I think what I can do next is, again, so a cool thing about Procreate, or not Procreate, sorry, Fresco. Fresco. A cool thing about Fresco, yeah, is that we can actually change the color of our layer. So I really like this feature of Fresco. If we create a new layer, above actually if we just click on appearances so we click on this icon down here to um, the appearances panel and we click on hue and saturation we can apply some hue and saturation properties to every single layer below that layer so depending on where you place that layer it'll apply those changes to everything below but not above that layer so just keep that in mind but this is a really cool feature of Adobe Fresco that I really like. Um, so I can go in and play around with the hue and saturation here, which is really fun. We can increase the saturation. Um, we can increase or decrease the lightness. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just make sure everything is maybe a little bit brighter. And we can also select a different one. We can also select color balance. And we can adjust the changes that way as well. So you see here, we're changing the colors of our design. So if you're like me and you're, you see your colors and you feel like, oh, they don't, they just feel a little bit bland. You can always go into the appearances panel and apply those changes. Um, so uh, what I wanted to show you guys is if, if I change where I place this, so if I bring this all the way down, Let's say I bring it up to here. It'll only apply it to whatever is below that layer. Mm. I think I accidentally placed it into this panel here. <laughs> um, so I'll click on undo. But again, so depending on where you place that layer, it'll only apply it to everything below. But that's a really cool feature of Fresco if you guys are interested in like kind of playing around with colors. Uh, maybe you've already selected a color palette, but you don't really like it. That's a really cool way to change the colors, especially if you... if colors are difficult for you I will just kind of find a color palette that I know will work and then I'll just change the appearances um, for all of those layers just to kind of play with different color options mm -hmm. so I think this looks good I think for this the the um our little light rays layer I feel like it's a little bit too orange so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring it down to the very bottom so I'm just going to bring it to the very bottom and then I'm going to go to my appearances panel and let's actually adjust um, the hue and saturation here. So we're only gonna apply it to the, those light rays. So this is where I can kind of play around with those colors. I think yellow might work better. And I think that looks good. And you can already see like just by utilizing that feature in Fresco, it really can make your artwork pop off the page and yeah. I'll kind of go through and see if I want to change anything else um, I think for some of my textures I want might want to remove maybe it's a little bit too much at that point but again you guys can keep them if you want again depending on the look that you're going for and if you're not a fan of the starry like starscape brush you can also draw in your own little sparkles so if I wanted to I can create a new layer above that one um, and again, using the oil paint brush and the color white. This time I'd make sure my brush is really small, maybe about seven pixels. And then I can add some sparkles this way. So let's turn off that starscape just so I can show you guys how that would look. Mm. If you want to add your own sparkles to your design. So let me zoom in here. And you see it kind of it looks a little bit different but there's different ways to add that like shininess and spark to your design and i'll zoom out just to see if i want to add it anywhere else 
Sometimes I'll make like little X's mm -hmm. on the page to see how that looks. And also like adding like these little sparkles onto your page will also like bring out that 3D portion. Yeah. Okay, I think that looks good. Okay, so I think so far that looks really good. So again, now that I'm kind of, again, you guys can choose how you want it to look with in terms of the stars you can you know, hide or show um, the starscape, or you can choose to create your own type of stars and sparkles onto the page. Um, you can also create your own brushes for that. I actually have brushes for sparkle as well. So if I really wanted to, I can go to my pixel brushes. And if I go to all, I have a spark brush set that I can use to add some oh. spark. Actually, let me use my other spark my Sparks Futuristic pack. So I can actually add, add Spark this way. So if I wanted to, I can create a new layer on top. And you see here, I'm adding different types of Spark and adjusting the size. Just kind of adds a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I created hand-drawn Sparkles and then I can also use like a stamp. So I used my own stamp for this. And then I have, thank you. So I, after like, you know, taking a look at this, seeing, okay, this looks great. At this point in our design, this is where we kind of see if we want to make any changes, make any adjustments, make any, you know, fix anything in our design. So right off the bat, I will just automatically see things that, okay, this looks a little bit messy to me. I want to fix that. Or maybe I want to make this color a little bit more bold. So before I actually say this is the final design, I would want, I think I want to make the pink a little bit more um, out there a little bit more saturated because I feel like it's blending a little bit too much with the orange so I can go into the thank you layer here our pink layer um, and I'm actually going to go into my paint bucket and I'm going to select the pink but I actually want to make it a little bit brighter mm. I'm going to fill it in just to see how that looks and I think that looks much better it feels like it's there's a lot more contrast with the background now because the the old, other pink was blending in too much with that orange so again keep that in mind whenever you are adding colors if you are creating like dimension and shadow just make sure that the layer on top of the shadow is significantly lighter than the bottom one you don't want it to blend in too much okay and i'm just going to zoom in here and i want to fix this portion of my layer here I'm gonna grab my eraser. Oops, let's actually reduce the size because that eraser is really large to about 10 pixels. And I'm just gonna fix it this way. And again, the cool thing about Fresco is we can utilize the ruler if we want to. So I can grab this ruler, drag it to fit that angle and just make sure all of those angles are the same. So I'm seeing here for the most part, these look the same. We can always go in and adjust. I can grab my brush here and select my orange. And you see here we're creating that perfect diagonal line. I'll have to grab my eraser to clean up a little bit of this edge. But we can use our ruler to create those perfect diagonal lines. So I'm just going to go in and just measure everything. Just make sure everything looks about the same. And this is a great way to just kind of check everything, make sure everything is the same angle. Let me fix this one. And you see here, we've created that perfect angle there. I'm just going through. And so for the U here, I might wanna fix this one. And then grab my brush here and then fill it in and you see we've created that perfect angle just to make sure all of the angles are the same so I'm just going through checking um we have a question from chat actually okay um who are your biggest lettering inspirations oh my goodness um that's a really good question there I'm trying to remember his Instagram account name, but there is a 
a pencil artist. I think it's it's like a very hard name to say. Adger. I have to try to find it, but it's like a <laughs> long A name. Um, and he primarily works with like pencil and like mm-hmm. he just does hand lettering and illustration. And he does like amazing like artwork with just a pencil. And I really, really like his artwork. <laughs> um, I want to be just as good as him with the pencil one day. <laughs> um, but I feel like there's a lot of like lettering artists who are also really, really good illustrators. Like maybe they've gone to art school or maybe they've been doing it for so long. Me personally, I'm not like the best illustrator. Like I can't draw faces and eyes and things like that. But there are some lettering artists who are just amazing illustrators. And yeah, those are the types of artists that I really, really like, really like. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. I'm sure there's a ton of artists. I follow like a lot of people on Instagram. Mm -hmm. A lot of illustration artists. Um, yeah, just a lot of really good artists. There's a lot of people that can draw. I'm always I always admire people that can draw people because I feel like that's like the hardest thing for me. I cannot draw faces for the life of me. Um, I guess I just gotta stick to lettering or practice. Or if there's a class mm-hmm. out there, let me know. Um, but yeah, I, I love any any artist that can draw like really really beautiful like faces and people and things like that. Realistic, like very realistic art. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have a lettering inspiration. I don't do much lettering mm-hmm. myself, but I do admire mm-hmm. lettering artists. Um, I can't think of what her actual name is right mm-hmm. now, but she was an Adobe Live guest. Her Instagram handle uh, is Have a Nice Day. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know her. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I like her yeah. art too. Very, very cute. Very cute yeah. art. Yeah, yeah, I like hers too. Yeah, there's so many like artists. And even when I'm scrolling through Instagram, I will still find like some new artists that I'm like, oh my gosh, how come I've never seen this person's art before? Mm -hmm. Um, You can always come across like just new art that you've never thought you would see. So I'm just fixing some of these edges. I know I might be overdoing it, but (laughs) sometimes I wanted to just make sure it looks perfect. Um, So I'm just kind of cleaning this up. And I just want to make sure all of those angles look the same. And then this O needs to be. So again, if you guys ever see my work, I'm always using like a ruler in Adobe Fresco. I just, I really love this feature. Also, if you guys wanted to, so if I go back to my layer down here, this layer here, you see that I was drawing little circles and things like that. If I create a new layer above that, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but if you hold down on the ruler, you can actually create circles, squares, and polygons Mm -hmm. in Adobe Fresco really easily. So if I wanted to do like a little circle, I can place it where I want it to go. And originally in my design, this original design, I had had planned this before. I had added like happy faces around, so maybe I might add those. Um, Maybe I'll add one here. We'll see how it looks. I wasn't a fan of it at the time, but... I wanted to show you guys this feature. So I'm actually going to grab that yellow. And then now that I've placed my circle where I want it to go, I will just drag and trace that circle here. So now if I move it, if I tap on this here and I move it, I can move it out of the way, turn it off and I can fill it in. And let me just make sure I'm on the right layer. I don't know. I think it's select. Oh, it's because the appearances is selected. Let me create a new layer above that and fill it in. So I'm just going to fill it in. And that's like a really easy way to create perfect circles in case you're wondering, how do I make like really perfectly symmetrical circles? Um, Yeah, the ruler tool is really easy to do that. Makes it really easy to do that. Was the person on Instagram, I'm going to try to pronounce this. um, Okay. (laughs) Abed Abidazara Abidazaria. That's who people probably. Are suggesting. Is it, does he have like a bunch of pencil art? Um, yes. Okay, I'm pretty sure that is him. Abid Azaria. Yes, that is him. Yes, <laughs> guys, check out his artwork. It's really, really good. Wow, yeah, that really is good. some cool work. Wow. Yeah, he has really good work, and I feel like he's like primarily works with like on paper and stuff. So I'm always like amazed like with people that do that because I feel like that's really hard to do especially because you're you're more likely to make more mistakes that way yeah um but yeah he's really really good so definitely check him out okay I'm gonna add some eyes to my design here 
<laughs> little happy face. So yeah, just kind of playing around with the design, see if I want to add anything else. So my original design, I did have happy faces. So I might add a little, a couple of them. Um, and just making sure this layer here, they're not overlapping. So I can go ahead and erase some of this here, just so it's not in the way. I'm going back to my happy face here. Just make sure you have that color selected. And we can see if we want to add anywhere else. Um, I can group these layers and then I can actually duplicate them if I wanted to, instead of having to redo them all the time, I can maybe move one over here, rotate it, maybe make it smaller. And doing the same process, duplicating and placing them somewhere else. Maybe one right here. <laughs> I got to undo that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's good. And I'm just going to fix this over here, kind of erase some of this here. Just so it's not super in the way of that face. Let me just fix it a little bit. Okay, so I think that looks good. And again, feel free to add any illustrations or anything that you feel represents you um, to your design if you want to. And I'm just going to add one more here. Let me just create a new layer above this one. Okay, so I think that looks good. And again, I'm just kind of seeing what else I want to do. And if you do, you again, like you have the option of removing or keeping things if you want to. I can remove the two if I want to. Maybe put something else there. If this is something you kind of want to send to, you know, your general clientele and things like that, maybe you don't want to have the two on there and just kind of make it easy for you to send. Okay, so I think that's good. Uh, and usually whenever I do create any digital cards, I like to add a little animation just in case, um, mm. because if they are going to receive it digitally, we can make some things move on the page. Um, so I'm actually going to go down here. Let's find our sparkle. Okay, so here's our sparkle. Um, what I'll do is we will tap on this little animation icon here, and I'm going to select one of these. And then I'm going to transform it. I'm just going to reduce the size like that. And again, kind of picking random ones throughout, just making them a little bit smaller. Maybe this one over here. Maybe we'll have this one rotate. So all of this is on one layer. All of these hand-drawn like little sparkles were on one layer. And I'm just reducing their size just a little bit. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so if I click on deselect, So I just realized something. I didn't create a new um, frame for this. So what we can mm. do is I accidentally didn't create that frame. What I could do is I could actually just select this layer. Actually, let's do this again. I will just undo those. Let's make them back. We can easily just do it really quickly. Mm -hmm. So before we do that, we want to make sure we create a new frame. So now this is an empty frame. Um, you can redraw the spark if you want to. So by doing that, you can just um, make sure onion skin is turned on. So if I click on settings and turn on onion skin, I can see the background. So I can do it that way and just draw in like new sparkles that maybe vary in size. Or I can just duplicate that original one and adjust the size that the way I was doing it originally. So what I can do, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to do it myself. Um, because I think some of them, I want them to just be a little bit smaller. Rotate it. 
It might be easier to do it this way. It just, again, depends on your preference. Um, like maybe this one, I want to make it larger. This one smaller. And again, you can use your eraser to kind of clean up those edges if you want. Maybe add new dots that pop pop out of nowhere. Okay. And then we'll make it move in a second. Okay, so now if I click on play all, you can see that oh. my little sparkles are moving. Um, and we can adjust the settings, um, reduce the frames per second. So maybe it's not super fast, maybe five, frame, five frames per second, something like that. Okay, I think that looks good. So this is something you can send to you know to people digitally. That's why I love like digital digital cards. We can send them as an MP4 or a, or a GIF, um, depending on how you want to send them. So this is a really cool way to add some some um, animation to your designs. And another yeah. cool thing is if you want to make it like add more things to it, um, you can also create a path with our animation. So if you want that sparkle to kind of go all, go all over the pa page, we can just draw like a path on our screen and we can click on add multiples. We can click on scatter. Oh. We can shrink and sway our designs. Um, again, I would just play around with these settings here and you can see kind of how this, how they're starting to kind of go all over depending on where you set that path. Um, you can say align to path not aligned to path. So just depending on how you guys want to show that animation, it's up to you. This one, the, there's a path that we've created. So the sparkles are all, all over. If you don't like that, you can just tap on path, this little purple box at the top and just click on delete paths. And you'll have that original animation just doing the frame by frame animation without any further settings to it. Okay, so I think the last thing I wanna animate it are the little happy faces because I feel like they're a little bit static on the page. Maybe we'll animate the light rays if we have time, but let's do this first one here. And again, what we can do this time is instead of redrawing that whole thing, um, let's just make sure they are, so the happy face, I can't duplicate it. So if you tap on it, I can't duplicate it. The reason is, is because these are multiple layers. So if I select it, there's two layers here. So what you have to do is you have to merge those layers. So whenever there's a happy face, you got to merge those layers um, and here too. So now we have our three happy fa happy faces on their own layer. So now if I tap, I can duplicate the frame. So you can see the reason why it's gray is because we have the onion skin turned on. So that's showing us what's behind. And I can transform only this frame and maybe we'll rotate it and maybe make it smaller. So if I play, it should look like that. And that, and we also have some um drawing behind it so we'll have to erase that and i believe it's here so let me just grab my eraser and erase okay now let's try seeing that happy face again so now we can see the happy face doesn't have anything behind it so again we'll go back to the other happy faces pause and we'll add some animations to those as well so we'll click on the animation tool here and then we will again duplicate frame working with this one and just transform this one frame so we're not transforming all the frames rotate and maybe make it smaller and clicking on done and then we can play that just to see how it looks and then we have our last one over here we can duplicate this frame and transform only that frame, rotate and make smaller. Okay, if I zoom out here and click on play all, now our card is, has come to life with like the sparkles and the happy faces. We, we can also animate the light rays if we wanted to. So I might do a little bit animation for that. Um, so I'll go to my light rays here. So here are our light rays. And what we'll do is we will click on 
the animation tool. So it's already selected. And what you're going to do next is let's create a new layer next to it. And we can add those colors. So I believe we're using this orange, orangey color. And then I'm just going to kind of change where they are placed here. Yeah, we still have about 15 minutes or so, so you got plenty of time. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna see how it looks. If I zoom out and I click on play, you can see how they're changing a little bit. Um, I just wanna see how they move. So I'll click on pause, go back to that layer here. And I just wanna make it look like they're moving outwards. And again, with our eraser, we can clean up some of those edges. And then just rotating, rotating my screen as I go around. I'm gonna add, have to add those pink circles. So I like to kind of go back and just play just to make sure it looks like my my light rays are moving so I can see that they are moving. So going back to that second frame and just zooming in here. And if you have trouble, maybe you feel like the opacity is too dark, you can also reduce the opacity if you want to. Um, totally up to you. You can make it really dark or make it really light. I'll probably make it a little bit lighter so you can see better. Um, so you said that this would be like a digital greeting card. How would you export something like that? I would either export it as like a GIF or as an MP4, depending on how you send it. Um, via email, I'd probably try to make a GIF or an MP4 so that people can open it up and see it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's how I've sent them before. Just so like it's more fun and interactive. And sometimes clients will send me cards, like digital mm -hmm. cards, and I really like it when they when they move. Okay, and then maybe this one needs to be a little bit further up. Again, we want to give the impression that it's moving. These light rays are moving a little bit further outwards. Okay, and then almost done going around. We actually have one here that's on a separate layer. When you're um when you're working in Fresco for a printed card, are do you work in CMYK or is that not something that you consider? I don't consider that um because I actually have a Pantone book, so mm. I'll just take the designs and then import them into usually Illustrator because um many I feel like a lot of the people that I've worked with they want the designs in they want them vectorized so that they can scale them and put them on different products besides mm -hmm. like greeting cards. Um, but then I'll use like the Pantone book. I'll go through the colors, try to match them, try to see which ones would work. I'll have my color palette on the screen, but I'll try to match them up with the Pantone book. So it doesn't really work for me like using CMYK, um, mostly because like the people that I have worked with, they're very particular in terms of like the colors that they want me to use. So they want me to stick to the Pantone book. So for the, for them, they're like, utilize this book. Um, mm -hmm whenever you are providing, you know, designs to us. But I wonder if other um, designers do that or other illustrators um, work that way or, you know, use the CMYK feature. Yeah. Okay, so the last part is we just have to add the little dots and we're just gonna grab the pink. And 
And feel free to change where they originally were. Rotate my design here. Okay, let me center it. And now if I click on play, now we can see mm. that animation come to life and we can go ahead and adjust it. So the cool thing is like we did have um, one of these light rays on a different layer, but it's actually blending in with the an animation just fine. So I'm just gonna leave it. Um, and it just I'm just looking at my design just to see if I want to fix any of the animation. Um, there is a slight color difference. I'll have to adjust the color if I want to, but I kind of like the different colors, like switching for the light rays. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, and I think that looks good. Just kind of checking it out. Um, there's only one part I wanna fix and it's this one here. So I'm gonna go in and just kind of clean this one up with my eraser actually. Okay. And I'm just catching like some little details that I want to fix. Okay, and then this portion here. I need to make sure I fill it in. Okay. Okay, I think that looks good. So, so far, so good. And then I think now that I'm looking at it, you know, I kind of see if I want to add or again, I'm always constantly seeing if I want to change, adjust anything, add anything. I think so far this looks good. If I want to maybe change some colors, I could do that. Again, I would recommend using the appearances panel if you do want to change some colors. Um, but I think what I do want to add is I do want to make sure I have that too at the top. So I'm going to go up here and just turn it back mm. on. And I Again, like as I'm looking at my design, that's the only portion of my design that I didn't use the live brushes. So I might want to go in and make sure I use the live brushes for that just so it feels more visually consistent. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity of this portion here. And we'll see if we could do it with our live brush. So again, I'm using the oil paint, oil paint live brushes, and I'm doing, I'm selecting this one, the oil paint detail, and we can reduce the size maybe to four pixels and maybe a black here so we'll create a new layer above that one and we can go in and kind of add it that way we'll see if it makes a difference in how it looks because that um the pencil look is kind of distracting me from the rest of the rest of the design it feels like it's not blending in too much mm -hmm. and the thing is whenever you do use black or any darker color for the live brushes, it's kind of hard to see the texture. So I have to also keep that in mind. We might need to change the color for this. Mm. And let me actually increase the size here. Now, if I turn off that sketch layer, that one does feel like it works better for the design, but I might want to change the color because it's really dark black. Uh, maybe we can do like a darker orange and I'll just fill in those layers. Make sure you have that layer selected. And you can see, um, I think that looks a little bit better. Just gonna play around with the colors really quickly just to see if I like a different color here. Again, just sticking to my color palette Maybe like a lighter. Okay, I think that looks good. And I might want to bring it down just a little bit here. And you guys can also add maybe like a from portion if you want, um, mm -hmm. which is another thing you can do. You can take this one and duplicate it. So all I did was I duplicated that layer um, and then I can just move it on this way. And I can erase and then right from, but I got to make sure it's all in the same line. So I got to find my layer with those lines. Here we go. Here it is. And turn it on and I can adjust it 
to be placed here. And I'll go back to my new layer and I can write the word from. I might need to adjust it a little bit, um, but that's okay. Okay. I'm just going to move it. So selecting the selection tool, you can close the lasso and then click on transform. Maybe drag it up a little bit. So there and click on done and click on deselect. And then I can hide my guides layer. So I think that looks pretty cute. I like that kind of like personal touch of like adding the to and from. Um, I'm just gonna make the two a little bit thicker cause I am using a thicker brush for the from. And I'm just, if you see me undoing, I'm double tapping on the screen really quickly because uh, whenever I'm doing letters, I tend to like quickly just make changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that looks good. So far, this is our card. So I think our card is pretty much ready to go. Um, does anybody have any questions or wants to see me do something else or maybe wants to see maybe maybe me change the color, maybe add more detail? I can also outline the letters, which can change the way it looks as well. Um, um, I was actually kind of curious to see... I noticed that you have quite a bit of different colors in your color palette. For one, I was wondering how long you've been working with those colors. And also if maybe we could try out some different color combinations um, mm -hmm. from your from your color palette, because it looks really cohesive. And oh, I'd love okay. to just see, see like different combinations these last yeah. few minutes. Yeah. So the colors, I, so the color palette actually came from um, importing my original thank you design. So I had planned the thank you card and I did it. I had added the color and kind of put it all together. Um, and so when it was done, you know, I wanted to utilize those same colors. So I actually just um, imported the color palette that way, um, mm -hmm. which is really cool. If you click on photos and add a photo, you can import that color palette from that photo. So when I saved my thank you card, it actually gave me way more colors than I had actually used so <laughs> yeah so it's like taking all of the different shades i think it's also because of the um the live brushes they give you that those different shades of the colors so I, it gave mm -hmm. me like a ton of colors so i technically didn't have all of these colors i believe i only had like about four or five colors that i was using so like the orange the dark orange the pink light pink yellow um and like a peach color and a really 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 light pink color so those were the main colors i was using um and so, yeah, when I imported it, it just gave me like a ton of colors that I wasn't <laughs> originally using. Um, but I try to stick to like the main one. So the pink, the orange and the yellow. Um, but yeah, if I wanted to change the colors, um, normally what I would do is I'm kind of like I get nervous with my designs because I don't want to mess anything up or accidentally delete something or accidentally change something that I can't undo. Um, what I'll normally do is I will try to duplicate everything on the screen and just kind of play with the colors that way. Um, so what I would do is everything that's hidden here, I'm going to go ahead and just delete. So let me just make sure I have all of these um, deleted. Delete. And just going through and deleting anything I'm not using. I can actually pull down my sketches and just bring them down to the very bottom. And then what I will do is I will just group everything into like a folder. So I'll select multiple and let's just select everything. Oh, these are should be deleted, but we'll just leave them there for now. And I can group them into a folder. So now we have our design into this folder and we actually did not select this one. So let's make sure this one goes in there as well. Um, and just has to go at the very bottom because of those colors. The colors are being applied down here. Let me just bring it down. So again, we have to make sure um, that everything's 
the layers are pro um, properly organized because again, I changed the colors because of the appearance. Um, the appearance layer was on a different, different part of our organization here. Okay, so what I'll normally do is I'll just take it and I'll duplicate the layer group because I don't want to like mess it up. Um, so I, I have my original one here. So in case anything goes wrong with this new one, I have the original here. Um, and then I'll just go in here um, and I want to try to just make it one layer, like try to just combine everything as much as I can. So this is at, at this point, I already know I don't really want to change anything. I just want to kind of play around with colors and stuff like that. So at this point, I'll just try to group everything and just make sure everything is merged. So I'll try to merge as much as I can. So I'll just select multiple and start merging layers here. We are just actually just about out of time, Natalie. Okay, so, okay, no uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's um, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you so much for joining yeah. us today, Natalie. Your card is gorgeous. Um, and also the animation was just had so much character. I love it so much. Thank you all so much yeah. for joining us as well. Umicorn, Oliver, Clever. Hello. Thank you so much for joining. Mm -hmm. um, and also... We are going to be taking a one hour break from Behance um, after this stream, but at 1 p.m. PT, we will be joining Shauna Lynn on the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Adobe, if you'd like to go over and watch her work in Adobe Express. Um, so yeah, one hour break, go grab a snack, take a, you know, take a nap <laughs> um, and, and meet us back on Twitch in one hour. Um, thank you all, everyone, for joining us, and we will see you then. Bye. Bye.